Well hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually going to go back and do the Lord of Blights again. The first one didn't sit well with me as I was trying some stuff that was new and overall it didn't really turn out well for me. So I am going back to the Lord of Blights but this time I'm going to paint it to the best of my ability with the techniques I know that work. Well, mostly. Now starting with the base, since it takes a long time for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take the base while it's drying and then we're going to dab the edge of a, a thick brush on it to disturb the ground and make sure it's not perfectly smooth. This is going to add some nice texture to the base. Now we assembled up to the point where it gets in the way of painting. So we're not attaching the shield, and we're going to coat the whole thing in pallid witch flesh as a start. We're not going to do any severe undercoating. It really doesn't matter. Now once all that's done, we're going to take white scar white, and we're going to dry brush all over the model, specifically the skin. And now with Kislev flesh, Agrax Earthshade, and pallid witch flesh, we are going to paint the flesh. We're going to start with a layer of Kislev flesh as a start. Then we're going to take some Lamian medium and mix it with Agrax Earthshade. We want a thinned down Agrax Earthshade and we're going to use this and create the shadows using this wash. And with a mix of Pallid Witch Flesh and Kislev Flesh, with two parts Kislev to one part Pallid, we're going to highlight the model, the upper raised areas, by spraying downward, straight down, to get on all the raised areas. The end result is a lot of good skin tones. We can see the highlights, we can see dark areas, but the only issue is that the dark areas are not dark enough. And now you're going to see me make a big mistake. I'm going to go back and try to use oil paints again using Gamsol uh, White Spirits and some of this Artist Loft Burnt Umber, I put together a wash. However, okay, the wash works great. It goes into all the recesses, except the recesses I want, the folds of the skin and stuff. And the problem with it is it just isn't dark enough, so I end up doing like a second coat of it. But it does something to the model. It makes it very hard for paint to actually adhere to it and future layers of paint just won't adhere to the model and I have to struggle to get paint on. Ugh, that was disappointing. I then decide to add some Agrax Earthshade directly into some areas. Eh, mixed results. And now with Lamian Medium and Contrast Magos Purple, we're going to paint the open sores around the flesh. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with layers of Lamian Medium as like a wet base. And then we're going to take the Magos Purple and we're going to blend it in into the flesh so that it looks like there's a good transition between the flesh color and the purple. And we're going to take the purple pure and we're going to dip it around the darkest areas where we want it to be the darkest. And now with Bestigore Flesh and Fugan Orange, we're going to do the boils and open fat deposits. We're going to paint all the boils and the flesh deposits with Bestigore Flesh. After that dries, we're going to go and take Fugan Orange and we're going to dip it all around the boils and in the fat to surround it. Once that is done, we're going to take Bestigore Flesh again and then paint the upper most raised areas of the boils and the fat deposits to give them a shine. And now using Ushabti Bone and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint these maggots that are coming out of the belly. Using Ushabti Bone first, and then once they dry, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and apply them over to some mixed results. Unfortunately, for some reason, I actually don't have footage of me painting them with the Agrax Earthshade, for some reason. And while we're at it, we're going to take some Mornfang Brown, and we're going to use this and paint all the little leather straps that are around his skin areas.
Now with Lead Belcha and Castell and Green, we're gonna use this as the base coat for the armor. I'm gonna paint all the metal armored parts this color. Afterwards, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade, and what we're going to do is we're going to build up layers. We're going to coat all the metal with Agrax Earthshade. After that happens, we're going to go back and use the Lead Belcha and Castellan Green mix again, and we're going to highlight the areas. And then we're going to go back again with Agrax Earthshade. And then we're going to go back again with the metal mix that we made and highlight further. We will then take Iron Breaker and we're going to dry brush this all over the metal. We're going to focus on the edges. We want to do a light dry brushing. We just want to add a silvery streak to the edges of the metal. Then we take the Iron Breaker and we will directly apply it to chips, holes, or places where we really need a good concentration of this color on the edge. And then using Doom Bull Brown, we use this as the base coat for all our wood. We paint the wood in the shield this, we paint the wood, uh, I don't know what this is, but basically the wood thing he has on his back. And then going to Nuln Oil, we're going to use this and we're going to shade all the wood with it. It's going to be a good coat of Nuln Oil all over the shield and the wood thing on his back. I then go back over all the wood places with a Doom Bull Brown as a highlight. The shield is the easiest, but as far as the... The trophy rack, I'm calling it a trophy rack. The trophy rack that's on his back, I'm gonna try to paint my own wood grains onto places where it's just flat. And with Mornfang Brown, we're going to go and do a further highlight on the shields and on the wood uh, trophy rack. We want to paint on the edges, but we also want to paint like the center or whatever raised area that we painted in with the Doombull Brown in our custom paint vein. And with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint his leather loincloths and the ropes on the model. Now. It's all going to be Mornfang Brown, but we're going to use Nuln Oil on the flaps, and we're going to use Agrax Earthshade on the ropes to give it a different color and sheen compared to each other. The Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil will look pretty good uh, separate, or look distinctively different. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to place Mornfang Brown, we're going to apply the appropriate wash, and then we're going to go back and we're going to paint Mornfang Brown on the highlights. And we're going to go back and apply the washes again, and then we're going to apply the highlights again. Now with the ropes, we will use overbrushing to make sure we get all the details there. Because it's a bit too ridiculous to try to paint each individual brand of 
rope. And then with XV88, we're going to use this as a fine highlight on all the edges, the tippy topmost edges of the rope and of the flaps. Now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Agrax Earthshade once again, we're going to paint uh, essentially the bones, skeletons. Now, there are a few skulls on his trophy rack which have flesh on them, so we're going to paint the under layer of bone first. We're also going to paint his horns, starting with a layer of Steel Legion Drab. We will then apply Bane Blade Brown on all the highlights on all the bones. And then we will use Agrax Earthshade to cover it all. And then a final highlight of Bane Blade Brown on the raised areas. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Magos Purple Contrast, and Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast, we're going to paint the head trophies on the trophy rack. In, in game, this is supposed to be like some sort of throwable ammunition, but basically we're going to start off with some Pallid Witch Flesh to paint all the flesh, the skin, as a base. We will then use Skeleton Horde Contrast to add some fleshy color to this. And right after that, we're going to add some Magos Purple to add like the bruising and the bloodish kind of colors in the flesh. Now we want to make sure that there's no pooling anywhere in this. We don't want any pooling, just want thin layers. And once that is done, we're going to add a simple layer of Plague Bear's uh, flesh uh, contrast paint onto the skin. And this is going to give it like a sickly green color to these rotting heads. They supposedly have been stirring and dunked in juices and absorbing it. And then using a little bit of Mornfang Brown, I paint the, how do I put it, bandages, ties, on the eyes and the mouth. And with a little Fugan Orange, I paint the boils on the head to add some more color. And with Balthazar Gold and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint all the brass bells and brass icons on this model. We're going to start with a layer of Balthazar Gold on all the brass. And then we're going to highlight it, or we're going to cover it with Nuln Oil. And then once that's done, we're just going to highlight Balthazar Gold over the highlights. We temporarily attach the model to a base with super glue, just for now, so we don't have to hold on to it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take lead belcher and we're going to paint all the metal parts. The hammer head, the giant blade on his shoulder pad, and these nails that go through his trophy rack. We're going to start with a lead belcher for a base coat. I then use Agrax Earthshade and coat all the metal pieces with Agrax Earthshade. Then using Iron Breaker, I then dry brush all the metal pieces. 
Then we're going to take some Nuln oil and we're going to paint directly into the cracks, slashes, damage, whatever of all the metal pieces. And now with contrast gullum and flesh, Riza rust, and nihala with this oxide color, we're going to add, well, color and flavor to the weapons. Now, since blood, when it dries, it turns brown, I'm going to take the Gilliman flesh and I'm going to apply it to places where I think blood could have been beforehand. So it has dried, so it gives this browning to the weapon. We will then take riser rust and then we're going to apply it to wherever it looks like the metal has just been eaten away or damaged, like just with bite blood effects or such. I don't know how to describe it, but basically wherever the metal has been deteriorated away is a good start. And then with the oxide color, we're going to place it into holes or to cover up some of the riser rust if we put too much on uh, just wherever you think looks nice and now with Vallejo pigments burnt umber we're gonna mix this with water and make a little wash and then we're gonna apply that wash directly onto uh, places where there are holes or other stuff like that it, all throughout not just the weapons but the armor as well basically places where we want it to appear like there's rust buildup like aged rust or stuff like that we don't want to go too overpowering and too much, we just want a little bit. I then go back with some Agrax Earthshade and I'm with a very thin detailed brush, I then paint the folds of his skin with it to fill in the gaps to add some more depth and shadow that the oil wash just couldn't seem to do. I then take Magos Purple and then I do the same thing like the Agrox Earthshade. I add this purple color into the flaps, but not just the direct cracks. I also paint like the underside of some of the fat, spreading it out. I then they attach the shield to it finally. The shield has been painted just like all the other metal pieces on this. I painted the base in my standard method and then I attach the model to the base. With Blood for the Blood God, I then go and back and just apply to wherever I think there's blood should be flowing out. From wounds, open wounds, sores, the maggots, the nails in the back, the flesh where the trophy rack is pierced through, all that kind of stuff. This is probably one of the most important steps of the model because this adds a lot of flavor, character, or liveliness to the model. And then with Nurgle's Rot, I'm just going to apply it everywhere all over the base that looks like it should. To cover up any mistakes I made on painting the base, to paint around where the feet are indented or indenting into in case there's any glue showing up. And then once that is done, I'll then use uh, Abaddon Black to edge the base. And then it's done, pretty much. Now for my final thoughts on the model. I have already painted one of these for the channel before, and, well, the previous one had many mistakes. I think I gave it like a 4 out of 10 or something like that, because I just couldn't do what I wanted to do. This time, I resorted to my old painting techniques, methods, and whatchamacallit, and it turned out pretty well. There's a lot more color, it's a lot more vibrant, but there are a few uh, notable things. First off, I am sick and tired of trying to use oil paints. Every time I do, it always fails, and it caused a lot of trouble this time, and it kind of like removed a lot of the different tones in the flesh, so that was disappointing. After that happened, though, one thing I actually didn't showcase for some reason was the varnishes. I got a brand new varnish from the Army Painter. Uh, not the can, I used the one that you uh, can brush on from a little bottle. Very expensive but it did really good so the metal is actually brushed with it and it did remove some of the shine on the blood and stuff so I avoided those areas. Uh, basically uh, the army painter did really good with the metal so I'm really happy with that. The 
throwable heads on the trophy rack, because that's what they are, it's ammunition. The Plague Bearer flesh added a, a lot of nice flavor. It looked more sickly, more green, so they look, uh, they look like they're severed heads affected by rot. The maggots this time, I actually redid them in the end. I painted them with Ushtabi Bone, but then I went back with Skeleton Horde Contrast on them. And then I added a little bit of Golem and Flesh to some of them on areas to add a reddishness. Uh, there are some maggots spread out throughout his body. I don't know why I don't have footage of that, but... Overall, this guy is done much better. There's a lot more tone and color in his flesh, and it overall seems really good. Personally, I will give this a... A 7 out of 10. Looking back, maybe I could add added more variation on the base, maybe some plant and fauna. The oil paint that I added did turn bad. The open wounds of the maggots on the stomach take a lot of space, and so when I discolor the area to showcase that, that purple blending stuff, I can't seem to get it right. It seems to overpower or take too much of the focus of the model, and I just don't like the way it looks most of the time. It just looks bad, even though it ble the, any mistake on the coloration of the stomach blends in well with the area and the other uh, key points or things to look at, the severed heads, the hammer, the shield, the bell, and stuff, uh, distract from it. That was a low point. I wasn't able to do that well. So overall, uh, 7 out of 10. I could do better. Wow. Next video, yeah, it's taken me a while to get these out because uh, I was running out of models to paint. The next one is a very important project for anyone who plays Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and maybe 40k. Well, see you next week. Subscribe if you want to subscribe to see more, like if you like the video, dislike if you dislike the video, leave a comment if you have anything to nitpick or whatchamacallit, and uh, have a nice day.